So this time we have, this is the image we're going to show you how to make. Now this image was actually built from uh, scratch. Essentially I started with this background right here and uh, worked on it from there. So to kind of show you what I did, we'll go ahead and go down the layers real quick just to show you what's going on. So first off, you know, you've got this this brown color layer which which really just essentially reduces those two things. It reduces the color and it kind of gives the the whole image the the sepia like tone. Um, and it's really nothing more than a layer set to a layer mode of color with the opacity toned down. Um, then I've got another layer here that's all that's set to overlay and it's just kind of a series of gradients to just kind of darken the outer edges a little bit almost almost like what a vignette would do but it, it's very subtle um, this is a layer group and as you can see it is a combination of the the barrel and the shadows and everything that's built over here to make this portion so if I hide the group as a whole you'll see all of it disappears uh, the layer group is made up of some dirt, bruising, and scratches and the like on our our uh, guy here. Uh, another layer is actually just him. And then there's a layer underneath of him, which is his shadow. And then there's the barrel and the shadow of the barrel. So that's that layer group. And then if we zoom back out, you'll see then this layer group here is actually the woman in the foreground. Um, this is made up of a series of layers here that are just kind of dirt and grime, things like that. Uh, this layer here is actually the bandage itself. Uh, it's a little bit more dirt and grime, some more dirt and grime, and then the woman herself. So. That's all of that, and then last but not least is the actual layer, the background itself, which is made up of two different layers, and it's actually just two different versions of the same image. One of them is blurry, and the other one's not blurry. The blurry one only blurs the background, and it's just kind of there to create the illusion that there's some kind of depth of field on this image to kind of to, to make it look more like it's a photograph that was actually taken than you know this crystal clear image and it kind of just it puts a little bit more em emphasis on the subject so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started and get into how I actually made all of this stuff and where I got all of my resources alright so as you can see I have DeviantArt open and uh, this is actually where I get most of my uh, resources so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this download image area here and click copy link location because this is this download image actually opens up a large version of the image and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to GIMP click file open location and paste that URL into that click open and what will happen is GIMP is going to download the image and then open it up for me and there we go so now that we have our background we're going to go ahead and create the the blur illusion that I showed you earlier and to do that, all we have to do is right click on this layer and click duplicate layer and click filters, blur, Gaussian blur. We're essentially creating the the blurry version of this image. And we'll just blur it maybe maybe at 20 and click OK. Let that blur go through. Okay, so now here is the blurry version, here's the non-blurry version. Now all we have to do is tell GIMP that we want the image to fade from this blurry to the non-blurry as the image gets closer to us, just like what an actual camera does. And in order to emulate that, we just have to figure out where the ground is coming at us the fastest, which it would be right here, right? Because this is about where the camera sits, and it's kind of looking up. So what we're going to do is we're going to just click on the Blend tool, we're going to right click on our layer, and we're going to click Add Layer Mask and we're going to set it to uh, we'll do black full transparency and click add and then we'll set our color to white make sure we're on the blend tool 
click on this and set it to foreground and transparent and we're just gonna click start here at this edge and click and drag oh wait that's not right it's the other way around let's undo that we actually want to click where we want it to be um, completely blurry so like where I where I started where I depressed on the mouse is where it's going to be um, start being at the blurriest point in the image and wherever I release is going to be the final point in which the blending happens which means that once I release this mouse wherever I release it from there below it it's going to be clear and you'll see so I'll release and you can see that it just kinda created a fade from this blur to the sharp and it, it just creates that illusion of depth of field much like what you would get from a camera now if you're not happy with what you get just hit control Z to undo it uh, click on your blend tool and just try it again and just holding control and that'll actually lock the angle of vertical because you want it to be vertical and see that looks pretty good so we'll go with that So now that we have the background pretty well made, we're going to go ahead and get the photo of the subject himself. Now here I actually have raw therapy open and I'm browsing through a couple of photos that I took myself. Um, they are all taken in raw format because that's all I shoot. It gives you so much more control and if, if you're not shooting in raw now, you really, really need to look into it. It's so, so worth it. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to actually use this photo right here, which it doesn't look very good right now, but if you open it up, you can actually tweak a lot of the settings in here to be able to make it work for you however it needs to. Let's see if I can reset all this back to normal. Okay, so here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just start tweaking on the settings of this photo until I get something that I like. Now remember, this is going to be out on a hot and sunny day, so we really, really want to make sure that the shadows aren't really apparent. You know, you kind of want to, you, you, you almost want it to look blown out, but not quite. Um, and of course I'm ignoring the background the only thing I'm actually looking at is my subject and I'm just trying to envision how that would look on the background as it is and you can always come back later and fix this but it's going to be easier if you can get it right the first time so that that looks pretty good we'll go with that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this out and export it as a JPEG and just hit OK. Now it should be in my batch queue. No, it just actually went ahead and just saved it. OK, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and switch back over to GIMP and hit File Open and then open that image. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording for a little bit so I can get it. I mean, I'm sure you guys know how to find an image and file open so hang on okay so now that my image is open I'm going to go ahead and work on it from there um, as you can see it looks pretty bright but a lot of these uh, a lot of the blowout here that I had talked about before um, it won't it won't be harmful because we're gonna actually add details to kinda darken up these arms remember later on we're gonna be adding the the dirt and the blood and the the bandage and all that stuff it all of that is going to make this look darker so it, it, it's okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the path tool to start tracing her out. So to trace her out I'm afraid that with the way this photo was taken there's really no other way to do this other than just getting out the pen tool, the paths tool and start tracing. Um, if you're not familiar with the paths tool <laughs> you're gonna learn now. So what you do is you just click on the path, path tool and then you click on a start point and then you're just going to click 
and drag and it's going to create this curve and what we're going to do is we're just going to use those curves to trace our uh, our girl and if you have a if you make a mistake just hit control Z and it'll go back a step and just take your time and go through and then you'll notice what I did here is I held in shift and whenever you're holding in shift it keeps the the curve symmetric so wherever I pull this the other side is going to be exactly the same but once I release shift it breaks that so um, that's important to know because this curve is actually driven by these lines that you make and it's not only driven by the one you're making but it's also driven by the one that it's coming from so for example if I have a big long curve like this whenever I start my next one it's gonna stay tangent to this line see that so now if I go back to this and I edit this line here it's gonna modify my curve so you have to be thoughtful of where you're going basically if you just keep your line always tangent to the actual edge of your image you'll pretty much be perfect the whole time and yes this is very tedious but trust me it'll be worth it and then through these little details I just kinda click so yeah um, I'm gonna pause this video at this point because this is a pretty much a long and tedious process and you've pretty much already seen exactly what I'm going to do alright so once you get your first portion traced the, the outer edge that is as you can see I have all of mine traced here um, you're gonna have to go through and also trace these inside areas as well here and here because we don't want that in the background so and I actually have already done that too so I'm just gonna show those two paths so you should have a total of three paths made one for the outer edge and then two for the inside areas and you'll notice here I actually just got rid of this lace because there's too much there's too much detail in there for me to try to work through and it, it just wasn't important enough to keep so I just decided I'm gonna cut it out so what you do is you click on the path right click on the path that you uh, want to make the selection which is the outer area and we're going to click path to selection and what that's going to do is it's going to turn our path into a selection which is a perfect outline of our our uh, girl now right click on one of your other paths and click subtract from selection and then do the same with the other one and what that's going to do is it's going to actually cut out this area and this area from our selection and now that we've done this we're going to be able to isolate her from the background easily by right clicking and clicking add layer mask and clicking on selection and then clicking add and just like that hit control shift a to deselect all I'll go ahead and hide my paths we now have our layer for the of the girl on a perfect isolated background now you'll notice that we still have some details here that are kinda awkward and you could have made a bunch of little itty bitty pads for those if you wanted to but honestly if you ask me it's gonna be easier to just get the paintbrush tool out and set your paintbrush to the color black and just kinda of go through and brush all those out if they were any other color I probably would be okay but this bright yellow is gonna stick out it doesn't have to be perfect but just go through with a relatively soft brush and just kind of get rid of all these details until uh, until you're done so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to pausing the video because this is a very tedious process and I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me do it alright so I went through and I uh, brushed out and took out all of those other little details and uh, this is it I'm good to go so I'm going to actually click file save as and I'm gonna save this as an XCF file we'll save it as I don't know isolated girl that way we have it ready to go now you could just drag this into here directly into your background but another easy way to do this is click file open as layers and click on isolated girl .xcf and click open and there it is so now all we have to do is move it in place and um, if you have to scale it down 
you know, you might need to do that, but in my case, I actually don't have to. Mine just happens to be the right size. So there you go. Um, now we have our our uh, foreground object being the woman in the image, and just kind of got to be cautious on where her shoes are. I think they almost need to be in line with the bottom of the photo. There we go. Okay. Now that we have our foreground in, we're going to go ahead and start adding some background details. Um, first thing we got to do is we have to get this particular guy in the background. So to do that, we'll just do the same thing we did earlier with our with our desert image. Just right click on the download image button here, click copy link location. Go over to GIMP, click file, open location, paste it in and click open. After a second, it'll download it and it's actually going to just drop that image right into GIMP. And yet again, we're going to do the same thing we did earlier where we're going to actually trace the outline of our character using the paths tool. Um, actually, let me try something else first. Actually, I think we're only going to have to trace half of it. Not even half of it, just a portion of it. Essentially, just this area right here where his shadow is because the shadow is creating too dark of an image to really actually do this right. So let me go ahead and take a step back and do this again. So we're going to use a different method and we're actually um, more of a isolating a background using color. Um, for more information on this, I have a tutorial already written on it, but I'm just going to show you how to do it anyway. So right click and we're going to click duplicate layer and we're going to click colors, desaturate, and we'll go by luminosity. You'll notice here this background is already perfectly white on almost the entire thing. Not all of it because the shadow here kind of messes that up, but that's okay. If we colors, levels, and we darken this image a lot, you'll notice that we can almost get him masked off perfectly. We can get the leg, the arm, and all of this with a paintbrush pretty easily. The only part that isn't right is this area right here, which we'll just go ahead and go back with the path tool and trace later. Because remember, the goal here is just to create a layer mask, a black on white image of the uh, the actual silhouette, if you will. Um, and if you don't really understand exactly what I'm talking about when I say that, I would highly recommend checking out my GIMP video tutorial on layer masks. Um, and I will go ahead and link that below this video. So like I said, I'm just going to go through and just kind of brush out the uh, some of these highlighted areas here and this is great this will save us a lot of time because you won't have to trace the entire image instead you'll just have to color in some parts and essentially trace a very small section that's usually the goal of using this method this method isn't almost never almost never gets the entire image perfectly but you can usually greatly reduce how much of, how much you have to use the pen tool which is a very tedious process in itself okay so right there you'll notice I kinda just trace the outline and that's because I'm gonna come back with the um, lasso tool and I'm just gonna kinda run through listen to me pen tool, lasso tool. You'd think I used Photoshop or used it at one time. Anyway, okay. So bucket tool, shift B, fill in that area with black. Make sure your sets fill whole selection, of course. There we go. And then just keep on going through and just grabbing some of these sections. Bucket tool, fill it in. Same here. We'll just kind of come around here like this. Bucket tool, fill that in, zoom out. And actually, we might have to work on this bottom area a bit too. Let's see. Yeah, there's a shadow right there. We'll have to fix this right in here. And probably, yeah, we're probably going to have to fix actually quite a bit of it. We'll see. Maybe maybe we can 
maybe we can do something here. Let's duplicate this layer and click colors, desaturate again. Again, set it to luminosity. And this time we're just going to select this bottom area that was kind of messed up there. And click colors, levels. And we'll just darken our image. And we'll try to make it a little bit brighter this time around. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to just except the fact that we're going to have to essentially trace this bottom area here all along this shoe and also right along in here. All of this looks okay. We can probably just fix that by selecting that area, click colors, levels, brighten it up. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Just kind of brighten that up to get rid of that there and then just kind of do the same thing on this little chunk of the shoe there we go okay and like a little piece of the corner there was made just brush that in at white okay so there we go now all you have to do is go through and with the paths tool trace off this area here and go from there to about right about here. So create your path that runs all the way along here perfectly. And once you make that, go ahead and stop. But I'm going to go ahead and actually do it right. And uh, But I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me do it. All right, so I now have my path made. I'm just going to go ahead and click to finish a loop and just kind of make it run around this and actually we're gonna have it come up to about here and just let that path finish out let me go ahead and zoom in fix that there we go alright so now that we have our first path made you can hit shift V and that will actually turn your path into a selection with the shortcut key. Now click on the layer that you're working on here to make the actual layer mask. Click on your bucket fill tool and fill in that entire area with white. Okay so that takes care of the bottom part. All we have to do is this side part here and essentially we're just going to repeat the same process we just did. Take your paths tool and trace from about here all the way up to about the top of his head right here. Okay, so as you can see, I have my path from the bottom to the top. And again, I'm just going to create that loop that I made earlier and hit Shift V to make my selection. Turn on my layer mask, hit the bucket fill tool, and fill in that area with the color white. So now I have a perfect layer mask created for my image. I just have to transfer it over to an actual layer mask. Now this is something that's notable. The fact that I did it this way gave me all that detail in the hair that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to get. In other words, had I used the paths tool itself through this hair, I wouldn't have been able to get all these fine, fine details. So, uh, another reason, there's another reason to uh, make sure that you, you know, try to keep an eye on whenever you can use that method. Okay, so, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually transfer this image this black and white silhouette image over to a layer mask and to do that all we have to do is right click on this layer and click add layer mask and set it to grayscale copy of layer and click add okay so now you can see that well let me hide this so you can see what's going on now is the layer mask was added and what it's actually doing is it's it's, it's making it, it you know it created the cutout it created the layer mask of this black and white image so all we have to do now is get this image onto our background image, which is this one here. And to do that, we're going to right click on our layer and click mask to selection. And what that'll do is that'll turn our layer mask into a selection so that we can copy it and put it elsewhere. Just right click on your background layer and click add layer mask, set it to selection, and uh, click add. And what you'll notice happened is it actually <laughs> did the opposite of what we wanted to do so to fix that we'll just click colors invert and there you go a really really well a pretty 
pretty good isolation. You can see there's some details up on top that are a little a little iffy and you know you could fix those by using the lasso tool and clicking colors levels and fine tuning that a little bit just to kind of get rid of this, some of that detail but in truth this is going to be a, a it's it's a brownish color it's going to be on a brownish background and this guy's going to be blurry anyway so it, it you'll never notice it so that being said we're going to go ahead and right click on this and click delete layer and save this out as an XCF so file save as okay save it in my pictures as an XCF close it and then click file open as layers and I saved that in my pictures didn't I and then just click open and there we go so now our guy is in the image itself and we can now just whoops make sure you click on him and set to move that the layer and we can now move him over as we see fit so there we go now that we have two of our images in our final composition we're gonna go ahead and put the barrel in as well now the great thing about the barrel image that I found is it's already already isolated from the background you can't tell from here but if you click on the download image button here whenever it opens you'll notice it's transparent on the background that green won't be in the image which means I don't even have to open this up and use the pads tool and trace it all out manually it's ready to go so if I right click on this download and click copy link location and then go over to GIMP well actually let's let's do this a different way if you click download image and open this image up and let it make sure it's downloaded all the way right click on it and click copy image go over to GIMP and then just hit um, paste which is edit paste paste as new layer it'll actually just drop it in as its own layer and look at that like I told you it's isolated perfectly so now of course we've got these three images floating around with no real sense of location or anything or size or anything for that matter so let's go ahead and organize these a bit first off of course the actual barrel needs to be underneath the guy in order to do that we're gonna just click on that layer and click on this down arrow and there we go and you'll notice I actually already made three layer groups for this one of the girl one of the two images for the background and one of the guy and I did that because my recording software won't let me actually organize this when I'm recording so I actually had to stop the video make the groups and then replay it but to do to create a layer group all you have to do is right click and click new layer group and it works just like creating a new layer and all you have to do is just drag the images that you want in that group on top of that layer group image and it'll it'll add them to the layer group it's really easy I promise okay so now we're going to go ahead and scale this massive massive barrel down to a size that it needs to be so just click on the scale tool make sure we're linked and just kinda of scale this thing down and here's a little hint if you hide the clip if you hide the clipboard if you hide the layer that you're scaling it'll actually hide the image and keep the preview open which makes moving this thing around loads loads easier I'm actually gonna hide the guy too and just kinda of scale it down to something that you think works I think that looks about right so go ahead and click scale unhide the layer and then we're gonna repeat that process with this this guy who now looks like a giant standing on a barrel so same thing just click on the scale tool make sure you're on your layer and click on the image and again we're gonna hide the preview or hide the layer itself and we're gonna actually go into our tool options here and just adjust the image opacity down so that it's it's just a ghost almost so that we can easily see the positioning and everything and see how he looks and fits onto the image and I'm just gonna kinda tweak it and tweak it until I until I get something that I like Uh, 
that looks pretty good. So go ahead and click scale, unhide the image, and just click on your move tool, kind of just move him in place, Let's zoom out, and there we go. We now have our barrel in place, and she is actually, I'm pretty happy with where she is now. I might move her over a little bit, but size-wise, I think she's about perfect. Now there's one big problem with this image right now. Um, earlier, we created that that depth of field to to kind of put more focus on our subject, but <laughs> both of these images are crisp. They are perfectly clean, and they shouldn't be. They should be a little bit blurry because you know the background that they're sitting on is blurry. So we got we have to fix that. So all we have to do is click on our image and click filters blur Gaussian blur well actually we can just probably repeat the same one get the same amount of blur and do that on the other one too but look even though we blurred our guy he still looks sharp and that's because of his layer mask so just go ahead and blur the layer mask as well but look it created this goofy looking outline that really doesn't look right how are we gonna fix that well, the reason why, it, well, first off, you have to understand why it's doing that. It's doing that because of the layer mask. If I hold in control and click on my mask, you'll see it disables it. And if we blur it, all we're doing is we're blurring the edge of the layer mask itself, which is catching some of that white on the outer edge. We don't want that. So unfortunately, this is one of those times where we have to destroy a layer mask in order to create our final images as we uh, envision it. So to do that, just right click on your layer and click apply layer mask. So now he's transparent like he like we would want him to be and whatever we do our Gaussian blur it's going to blur it like we expect. Although that's probably too much blur. So let's go ahead and reshow Gaussian blur and maybe we'll turn that down to 15. That looks pretty good. And then just do the same thing to the barrel and here's a hint shortcut key for repeating the same exact filter with the same settings is control F. So there we go. Now both the barrel and the guy are blurry. So next up we're going to go ahead and create the shadows for our our barrel and the guy because you know it needs a shadow. If you look here, you if you look at the rocks closely, you can see there's a shadow that's being cast, which means this wasn't taken at noon. So we have to create a shadow that matches everything else. And if you look closely you can see there's a little shadow there and it's coming off on the left side so we're gonna try to match that up as best as we can to do that just right click on your guy layer and duplicate him click on the bottom most one and click um, actually let's hide the top one real quick and then click colors color eyes and we're gonna set the lightness all the way down and click OK. So now we essentially have a black silhouette of our guy. And then just click on the move tool, make sure it's set to move the active layer, and move it over a little bit. Kind of like that. Now, of course, it wouldn't be that perfect. So we have to kind of tweak it to make it work right. So click on the smudge tool and just kind of start smudging some of the detail around the barrel a little bit and then of course on here it would kind of be flat right and a long foot there oh see what's going on there see there's a sharp edge here and this is caused because by our layer boundary so whenever I smudge it's creating a perfect hard edge and we don't want that this is one of those things you gotta kinda keep an eye out for. To fix that, just right click on this layer and click layer to image size and that'll fix that. And then just kinda stretch that foot out a little bit. Zoom out and set his layer mode to overlay. We'll see how that looks. See overlay is not the right solution. Let's leave it on normal and then just turn the opacity down. And then go back with the smudge tool and just tweak it to look right. 
and we still want to make sure that we have that shape. See, the bear, that went up too far. We don't want it up that far. So you're just going to take the smudge tool and just kind of fine tune that shadow until it looks, well, it looks real. It's looking better. I think the head's still out a little bit too far, though. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's a good start. We might come back to that later and tweak it further, but for now, I'm happy with that. Next up, we're going to go ahead and work on the barrel, and it's pretty much the same process. Uh, just right-click on the barrel layer and, layer and click Duplicate Layer. Um, hide this, and then click on Colors, Colorize, and set it to all the way down on Lightness to create the black. And then just click... But, well, this time the thing is, is we actually kind of want the barrel to be rotated and kind of going up this hill. So instead of just clicking on the move tool and just moving it over a little bit, we actually have to do a little bit more. This time we have to click on the rotate tool and just kind of rotate it from about here, noting that this thing I'm clicking on and dragging is going to choose where the center of the rotation is. We'll have it rotate something like that, I guess. And then click on your move tool move it up and then click perspective and perspective tools really really useful um, if you're not already familiar with it I have another tutorial that talks a little bit about it but honestly it's just one of those must learn tools that will do so much for you because you can just you just grab corners and you can create this perspective distortion so easily with objects. It's it's probably one it's probably my favorite transformation tool overall. It's just it's so powerful. So that looks pretty good. That's close enough for us to work with it. We'll put it that way. So unhide the layer and let's just move it a little bit down. Zoom out. Turn the opacity down probably to about the same amount as our other one, which is 36. It's close enough. Then get your smudge tool out and just kind of smudge the detail. And you can see I'm trying to not make it look so perfect because it is on a hill after all. So I mean there is going to be some some differences in the in the shape on how it actually looks. Maybe not quite that extreme, but just a little bit. It looks pretty good. I think the shadow is still a little too strong. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more. And be like right about there. Okay, so that pretty well sums up them. Um, the only thing we have to do yet is add some dirt on his arm. But before we do that, I kind of want to do the dirt on her arm first so I can match him up to her. Okay, so what I like to do whenever I'm trying to create scabs and 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 blood and things like that. If you've ever worked on my zombie tutorial, you probably already know the answer to this. But to me, rust really just creates this nasty looking skin if you use it with a layer mode. Like, look at this right here. This specific area. I mean, if you think about that and imagine it as skin, it is ugly. So, rust is quite possibly my favorite thing to use whenever I'm trying to create the image that somebody is is injured in some way. So I actually have this great rust um, texture here and I'm just going to right click and click copy link location like I usually do. Switch over to GIMP, click file. Uh, you know what actually let's let's actually do it this way instead. Let's do it like we did with the, the uh, barrel earlier. Right click, copy image, close, switch to GIMP, and hit 
paste and right click to new layer or alternatively you can also click edit paste as new layer that works too okay so I'm going to create this on her arm up here so if you change this layer mode to overlay or maybe even burn what's burn do see burns too strong well burns too strong right now but I think we can oh look at that that, that almost wraps around her arm perfectly that's let's yeah let's go with that now the problem is, is it's too colorful it's too red it looks it looks fake now of course we're going to actually right click and mask off all this other stuff the only part we're actually going to keep is uh, just pretty much this and then this here maybe we'll see but in order to make it not so colorful we just have to change the colors of the actual rust image itself so click colors hue saturation and we're just going to turn the saturation of this down and look just like that all of a sudden it looks a lot more like blood and maybe we can tweak the hue to get a, a deeper red so you just kind of mess with this until you get colors that you're happy with that looks pretty good yeah that's disgusting okay so right click and click add layer mask set it to white full opacity and click add now click on your paintbrush tool using a soft brush and set to the color black just kind of start getting rid of all this extra unnecessary stuff here and don't worry about accidentally getting rid of too much because you can always hit X and fix it later Let's see X switches between the colors black and white if you are, well your foreground and background color and uh, right now I have it set to black and white so black will remove and then white will add okay um, that looks pretty pretty cool now the one really cool thing is, is since I've made this in a layer group I don't have to worry about keeping it fixing it all on this edge because now that this is on a layer mode it's only going to affect whatever else is in this layer group which in this case is the woman but look as soon as I hide her it starts messing with the rest of the image but once she's on it hides all that extra stuff uh, layer groups are one of the best things to happen to GIMP easily okay so that looks good for now um, we may we may change what all is visible there later depending on what we what we find as we move forward in our our destruction of this person's arm all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna darken these arms a little bit they um, they are pretty bright and I guess I guess I didn't I guess I didn't account for how how well the dirt would actually show up on it so we're gonna have to darken the arms just a little bit just enough to be able to kinda of help that dirt pop out but with how bright our image is we really actually needed it that way anyway for the you know for the actual rest of the body too unfortunately the arms are just the brightest feature but that's no big deal so go ahead and click on the bucket fill tool fill in the color black and set the layer mode to overlay and you'll notice it actually makes her as a whole darker now we don't want all of her darker we just want her arms darker so we're just going to use the layer mask. Right click and click add layer mask and set it to black full transparency and click add. Now click on your paintbrush tool and set it to white and just zoom in and just start brushing in that dark color. And the nice thing is you don't have to worry about the edges, a lot of these edges because the um, the layer mask will only or the layer itself will only affect what's in its group which again is just just her so the only the only time you have to watch for the edge is whenever it's an edge of the hand onto another part of her see like for example we don't really want that shadow to be that dark we can leave that as it is but we do want this finger a little darker so I'm just kinda of brushing these details in
hide and show, show you before and after. Now watch what this does to this this rust color whenever I darken this. Look how much more red it makes it. That that's actually kind of a problem. We're gonna have to tweak the color of that rust to look a little better now. But you know, no biggie. Probably just have to remove more color from it to compensate. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. So just click on your rust layer and click colors, hue saturation, and just turn that saturation down a little further. Maybe the hue over. It's doing what I'm thinking it's doing. Yeah, it's changing. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to actually drop the opacity down on this a bit, I think. Yeah, there we go. Kind of give it some of that flesh color back, but still make it look, you know, like it's actually there. And I think the severity of this injury is a little, a little, a little extreme. So we're gonna, I think I'm gonna get rid of some of it. So just color on the layer mask of that image itself on black and just kind of get rid of the details that you don't really want. I don't really want any of this. I think that's too much. But I do want that little chunk there, so we'll go with that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Alright, so next up we're going to go ahead and create some dirt on her just put some dirt on her arms and her outfit and the like just to kind of give it the illusion that uh, you know she's dirty I mean she's in this desert like scene she should be completely filthy so to do that instead of using another texture I'm gonna actually just or I'm sorry instead of using another pre-made texture online I'm actually just gonna use a pattern that GIMP has built into it so just right click and click new layer hit OK and fill that pattern fill that layer in with the bucket tool set it to pattern fill and set it to the pattern called walnut and just click and there's your pattern that's pretty much the texture of our dirt if you right click and click add layer mask set it to black full transparency and click add then get your paintbrush tool out and just start using a bunch of different random crazy brushes to just kind of paint some of this detail in now of course this looks really bad right now and that's because we are in the wrong layer mode just set it to burn and then we're going to want to turn it down some and just kind of start going back and forth with your brush hit the X key to switch between the colors black and white remember white adds and black will remove and just you know add some add some filth in there change over to different brushes try to get different textures and just add and remove until you get this this sense of a random looking pattern okay that's a that's really rough obviously but that's okay we're gonna go ahead and go with that for now and um, as we continue to work on this we'll come back and fine-tune that later but right now the idea and the goal is to just kinda lay out the groundwork of the image itself and really fine-tune it later okay so now I have this image of this bandage on this person's arm don't panic the blood's fake but either way this would be perfect to add to my image to really to really give the effect that my um, the woman is injured so we're gonna go ahead and click on download image and actually let's open this up as its own image first so right click on the image or the link and click download link location go over to GIMP click file open location and paste that URL in click open Gimbal download the image and open it up. And we're going to basically create a layer mask that isolates nothing but the bandage itself. We don't even really want this part in the background. We just kind of want the wrapping itself. So right click, 
Well, actually, let's go ahead and use a path just like we did before. So with your paths tool, just take your time and go around it and just trace this out. Oops. And there I went ahead and fast forwarded a little bit so you guys wouldn't have to wait forever for me. And we'll just finish up the trace here. Okay, so just right click, or I'm sorry, hold in shift and hit V to turn that path into a selection. Right click and click add layer mask, set it to selection and click add. And there we go. We have <clears throat> we now have a perfectly isolated bandage to add to our image. So to do that, we'll just go ahead and save this as an XCF. In our pictures folder, save. Go over here, click File, um, open as layers, and pick that bandage. Pick that bandage and click Open. Here we go. So now we have the bandage added to our photo. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate it and I'm going to put it right on her arm right here. So let's click on the rotate tool and rotate it around and turn the image opacity down so we can kind of get an idea as to where we've got this thing. And then just click rotate. It'll move it. And let's just move it up the arm until it lines up well. I mean we could scale this but <laughs> Miraculously enough, it's actually right about the right size. Alright, that looks pretty good. So now, that's pretty much everything involved in her. Now all we have to do is add a little bit of dirt to this guy over here. To do that, we're just going to do exactly what we did earlier with her. The only difference is, with him, all we're going to actually need to do is use a black overlay layer because he's too far away to really be able to pick up on those fine details. So right click and click new layer. On that new layer click on your bucket fill tool and fill in the entire color layer with the color black. Now no, I clicked on foreground color fill because chances are you're still set to pattern fill from earlier so you gotta make sure that you click on that so that you can color in the color black again. And Then just set your layer mode to overlay and again, you'll notice the very interesting thing is, is now that we set a layer mode and it's in a layer group, the only part of the image it's actually affecting are the layers inside of that group. If this were outside of the layer group, it would have an effect on the entire image. So that saves us a lot of masking. <laughs> so on that note, we're going to go ahead and add a layer mask, set it to black full transparency, and click Add. And get your paintbrush tool out, and get a get a splashy brush, and just kind of start adding adding some some dirt on them here and there. And then of course we're gonna blur this so that it matches him. So that should do. Just click filters, blur, or reshow Gaussian blur, and move down on top of them and see what's a suitable blur amount? Maybe 11? Yeah, that's pretty good. So if you zoom out, it's a pretty minor detail, but it's the minor details that make a big difference. Alright, so I, I thought about it a little bit and I think that I want to kind of change how we're handling the dirt on her. I, I think that that this is still important but I think it should be um, supporting another layer. So right click and click new layer. Oops, there we go. New layer. Hit OK. And fill it in with the color black and set that color to the layer mode overlay. This is very much like what we just did with him. And then click add layer mask, set it to black full transparency. Click add. And just again with that splashy brush yeah, see that looks like dirt. That looks a lot more dirty. So that we don't have too much of the same general color 
for the dirt. Kind of just mixing it up a little bit here. And just kind of add the dirt as you see fit and kind of try to get some smaller particles in there too. And you know, change your brushes around, try different ones, see what you can get to create the result that you like. You know, maybe add a little filth on her there too. Okay. That looks a lot better. Okay, so with that, I'm pretty happy with that. And you'll notice what I was doing there is I was actually adjusting the 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 pattern layer opacity up and down to kind of tweak how visible it is. And I was doing the same thing with the overlay layer. Just it, it's a great and simple and fast way to just fine tune everything in your image at one time, or everything on your layer at one time. I felt that the the burn layer as a whole was just too bright or too visible so I toned it down a bit so that I could then switch over to my overlay layer and create more more fine details with it so there we go okay now let's see about Maybe we should make that a little more red. So I'm gonna just turn the level, the opacity on my burn up, just to give it a bit more. I don't know, make it more dramatic. Because over here, this is so red now compared to this. So that looks pretty good. But before I start tweaking these colors any further, I'm gonna go ahead and actually colorize this image to, you know, so that I'm actually working with the colors that it will actually be. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and right click and click new layer and set it to transparency and click OK. Now I, you'll notice I clicked cancel, that's because I already made the layer here um, whenever I wasn't recording because I wouldn't be able to do it while recording because I had to do a drag. Anyway, so to, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill this entire layer in with a color. So if you click here, you're going to just use a brownish color kind of like what I already have here and uh, click OK. And then just fill that entire layer in with that color and set the layer mode to color. Now of course, that's a little too strong. I mean, it completely removed all of the color completely and just made it all that color as a whole. We don't really want that. We still want some of the details. So go ahead and turn the opacity back on that image just just enough to be able to really give it that effect and look now all of a sudden this really red color here and this deep red color here they, they look like they're a part of the image a lot more so just by doing that I think it really made the image look a lot nicer and knowing that also look at the dirt all this stuff here that was looking too red and stuff like that it, it all looks pretty good now the only thing that kind of disappeared is the dirt on her sh on her outfit, which I don't I don't even know if we're going to be able to really do much with that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the overlay layer, it's layer mask, the one that we used earlier to create the dirt, and I'm going to just try to see what I can do about making a, making this outfit look more dirty. But I just don't think there's going to be much we can really do because it is already brown, and we're on a brown color scheme trying to make more brown I mean what do you do well surprisingly a slightly darker brown apparently doesn't look too bad but it, it looks kind of monotonous so let's change our brush up and try to spice things up a bit here. Switch over to another brush, see what this one will do for us. See, I get sort of too much. Here, this guy. Uh, 
Okay, that looks all right. So from here, you're just going to continue on, just kind of fine-tuning everything until you're really happy with what you get, and uh, you're pretty much done. The only other step I actually did was I added a vignette. So to do that, you just right-click, and you click New Layer, and you make sure it's underneath your color layer, and click on your Blend tool, your Gradient tool. Make sure your foreground color is black. Set the gradient to foreground to transparent and click and drag. No, I'm holding in the control key as I'm dragging to keep it a straight line. And what we'll do is we'll just create three gradients like that and set the layer mode to overlay. And notice that is entirely too big. So we're just gonna undo and make our gradient a bit smaller. So I'm gonna start from further back this time. So it's not quite so strong. And again, set the layer mode to overlay. Turn the opacity down quite a bit because we want it to be a subtle. I mean, it should be barely even noticeable. Yeah, you see, I'm just fine tuning it now. That looks pretty good. So that's not bad. Um, I'm probably from here. I would probably continue working on her back and maybe the dirt on her arm to make it look a little more convincing but I mean other than that that's pretty much the image so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below I would be more than happy to help and again thank you so much for um, being a premium member of GIMPT